thanks for visiting my channel thanks for subscribing thanks for sharing my presentations today the topic is acquired angel edema before now i have published a full presentation on hereditary angel edema types one two and three also involving details on acquired angioedema and idiopathic angioedema. If you haven't listened to that, please check the link below. You can copy and paste. Now, acquired angioedema. It is rare. Good thing that is rare, right? Because we don't want trouble, okay? It could be angioedema 1, that is, it is associated with malignancy, particularly of B cell lineage or breast cancer and so on. But the angioedema 2 is associated with autoimmune disorder or disorders with C1 stress inhibitor autoantibodies. I'll go into more details in a bit so is either from cancers or from autoimmune disorders either way c4 is consumed particularly in neoplastic disorders like b cell lymphoma or because of immune complexes Antibody against C1 stress in Peter could have been produced as it is found in monoclonal gammopathy or autoimmune diseases like systemic lupus erythematosus, rheumatoid arthritis, Hashimoto's aeroditis, surgery uh, syndrome, dermatomyositis, and so on. It's going to present later on in life. And why that? Probably because most of these cancers and autoimmune diseases will be found at that very age. In acquired angioedema, that is bradykinin induced, there will be no urticaria. So, there's angioedema, no urticaria. Then, we should be considering bedicanin induced angioedema. First thing first, is this patient on any medication that could lead to this? And someone is asking, which type of medication would that be? Okay. Any Ramipri, Elanapri, Catopril, in a nutshell, any angiotensin converting enzyme beetle right now? If the answer is yes, stop it. Okay. Is this patient on angiotensin receptor blockers? Mm -hmm. Stop for now. Any non steroid anti inflammatory drugs? Keep it off for now. DPP4 inhibitor? Keep it away for now. Then, a new attack has occurred, right? Okay. We will now check for C4 level. Complement study, right? Then we are going to test for C1 stress in beetle level and function. And then we can also check for C1 Q level. Okay, the results are here. And what do you think we're going to get? Oh, someone is supplying the answer somewhere. Mm, you can see it right here, okay. C4 is going to be low. C1 in beta level will be reduced. And the function also, when it is determined, will be low or dysfunctioning. But C1Q level will also be low. This is in disparity when compared to hereditary angioedema types 1, 2, and 3. Why that? C1Q level will be normal in hereditary angioedema. 
Y type 3 Ereduce angioedema will have everything from C4 to C1 in beta level from to C1 in beta function all normal. Now we've seen some differences, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, we want to make a definitive diagnosis now from complement studies that there is no urticaria. There is negative family history here. C1Q level is low. And this is presenting late, you know, as per age. So this is not found in children. It's not found in adolescents. Hereditary angioedema will present early in life, in children or adolescents. This person is adult, okay? This is traceable to malignancy or autoimmune condition or conditions. For example, maybe this person is having semi lupus erythematosus or rheumatoid arthritis or hypothyroidism secondary to Hashimoto's thyroiditis and so on. And then there is angioedema, bradykinin induced, and is not as a result of the medication, and there's no urticaria. Then, we have done our complement studies showing us C1Q level is low and the rest will be abnormal. C4 level is mopped up you know, on the system. We can conveniently say with a high degree of suspicion that this is acquired angioedema. We might have to do some other stuff no as per diagnosis and if you want that please click on this link below or copy and paste i'm going to find full details there now what could be the possible trigger or triggers could be pregnancy setting foods cold exposure viral illnesses particularly in children emotional st you know, stress tongue piercing trauma surgery or dental procedures okay do we need to know more yes absolutely okay what do we want to know more we want to know more about the full diagnosis process we want to know more about pathogenesis how could this be you know there's angioedema no urticaria, bradykinin induced, and C4 level is mopped up, traceable to cancer, traceable to autoimmune conditions. How could this be? Now, we want to know about pathogenesis. How about signs and symptoms? We need to know. Differential diagnosis. So, if it is not acquired angioedema, what could it be? Because we've gone through hereditary angioedema types 1, 2, and 3. Treatment. Oh, yeah, in acute phase. What are we going to use? We are not going to use you know, the conventional medications to treat allergy or anaphylaxis. Here, your antihistamines and corticosteroids will not suffice, right? Okay. If that is not the case, then what are we going to use? You are going to get that here in a bit. Provilasis, short term, long term. What are the medications for short term and long term? And of course, the core of provilasis and treatment in acquired angioedema is going to the root, right? Like is this semi lupus erythematosus? We have to address that and help the affected person that way. Is this cancer? Then oncologists will be involved and so on. So, if you want to get all these pieces of info, you, you are in the right place. Just come again to my channel, click on this, or copy and paste. But be prepared for about one good hour. 
that one now will give you, you know, the chance to know everything about hereditary angioedema types 1, type 2, and 3, also acquired angioedema, even idiopathic angioedema, and all these topics are covered right there. With that, I've come to the end of this very presentation. Thanks for listening. Thanks for subscribing to my channel. Thanks for sharing. And you are free to give a thumbs up. You are free to leave a comment. I appreciate it.